Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another week of the Max Potential Habits podcast. Today, I am super psyched to have on the best selling author of the 12 week year. Get more done in 12 weeks than others do in 12 months. And I want to share with you all, if you've worked with me before or you've watched my videos, listened to podcasts, you know that I plug this guy all the time. We have on Brian Moran, who is the CEO and founder of Brian Moran and Company. As I said, he's a best-selling author and should be because this book is incredibly useful to help you implement strategies that are going to take your business to the next level. If you're here listening, you all know that this is the place for tips, tools, and inspirational interviews to help you optimize your habits so that you can thrive and take your business to the next level. And Brian Moran is the main reason. I I, I was introduced to this book by, I think it was actually by uh, Before the Millions, DeRay, on his podcast. We were having a great conversation and he said, you got to check out this book because I had told him I do a quarterly plan. I read it and I was like, okay, this guy has got to come on the show. And he is, I'm so grateful that you're here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to the show, Brian. Yeah, great to be here with you. Awesome, so tell us a little bit about your background. How did you get into being a business, do you call yourself a consultant, a coach, a trainer? All of the above, yeah. Okay, (laughs) awesome. (laughs) So, Without getting too much detail, I started in UPS paying my way through college. I was working evenings. My parents just weren't in a position to pay for it. They offered me a promotion into management, and I was getting a degree in physiology to be a strength coach, but I loved it, and that set me on a completely different path. Uh, Moved to California, got in with PepsiCo, joined a consulting firm, moved back to Michigan, um, really struck out on my own after that, and started working with some some local clients, and, and just really focusing on how to help business owners, CEOs, leaders be more effective. And that's, that carries through to what we do today. But that's, so that's the, that's the quick version of it. Okay. Super quick. What do you think, what do you think intrigued you about doing this as a business and, and taking it on as, you know, I always think about people leading an inspired life and stepping into their path and loving what they do, especially trainers and consultants tend to be in that version. So what, what was it for you that brought you down that road? Well, you know, the, it started when I was in, in corporate America, um, in leadership, just realizing the impact leaders have, you know, and, and the responsibility to be the best leader I could be. So I got switched on pretty early into, I'm um, just, you know, I had a degree, but I really learned from reading and trying and back listening to tapes back when they were on tapes before CDs and podcasts, even listening to that stuff in my car and just taking in as much as I could and really uh, applying it in the roles I had. And so I got, I got really excited about me growing as a leader, me growing as a person, and then the impact I was having as I, as I applied it and I taught it to others, which ultimately led to you know, what I do today, which is probably the most rewarding of anything I've done in my career is, is because it's the impact. Yeah. Yeah. You have a broad, broad reach. You, I know you train, tell us a little bit what you've turned it into. So Brian Marina company, what exact, what do you do exactly in that role? Yeah. So our, our mission is to change lives. <laughs> okay. That's our, that's our mission. We have three guiding principles, dream big, serve others, do great work. And so we work in just about every industry at every level. Um, you know, our, one of our primary industries is financial services. And what happens is those guys give our book out to their clients, which are business owners. And so we literally worked in about every industry. Our, our latest claim, Amanda, is that we're intergalactical. You know, we've been international and global for years, but there's a company that um, goes out to asteroids and mines them for precious metals and they use the 12 week year. So, so we got that going for us now. Nice. Too, but, uh, I yeah, love that. So you know, so I, it's great. Go for it. Yeah. Go I, I love that. I always think about when, uh, as your vision expands, as you grow. So you, you know, at first when you start out, let's say even as a kid in the developmental stages, you start out with a vision of like, what's my week going to be like? And then what's my month going to be like? And then year, and then it expands out. Oh, how can I serve my community? And you've got the galactic cosmic universal. Yeah, there you go. So that's awesome. (laughs) Huge, huge vision. 
I think, what do you think about that in terms of visioning and driving your business in a certain direction? At, at what stage of the game did you start to up level and notice that you were really driven to have that big of an impact? You know, it was pretty early on that I, that I realized I wanted to have an impact like that. Mm -hmm. um, came from a very middle class family, great family, though very, my mom and dad were very intentional about building family identity, what it means to be a Moran, and we do that with our, our family too. But somewhere along the line, just realized that, um, you know, I wanted to have an impact. And, yeah. and it started as I got into leadership. And then when I went on my own, I saw an opportunity to really expand that. And, you know, the book we wrote, interestingly, Amanda, you know, a lot of people write a book and then they try and build consulting or training around it. Our book just documented what we were doing with our clients. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the reason why it's so successful. Yeah. Um, that's... Because it, was, it wasn't something that we put out as theory and then had to go prove it. It's what we were doing and was working. And we start, sort of called out all the things that didn't have an impact and didn't have an effect. And that, yeah, yeah so a little that's different useful. approach. I really, I value that approach. It's something I've noticed in growing my own business is that I think when you're starting out and you don't yet quite know what you're doing, <laughs> you know, you, you put ideas out there and then test them. But I've yeah. noticed that it's so much more useful when I'm go, oh, I've worked with all these people and I see what has worked and now I create a system, a formula, a theory around it. It's a, it's a yeah. really valuable approach for the people that you get to work with. Let's talk about, well, first, I want to say, what, what have been some big challenges for you in building your business? Just for listeners, you know, everyone here is, or not maybe not yeah. everyone, but most people are business builders, and we all face challenges along the way. So I like everyone to know that they're not alone and that it's just par for the course. So what are some big challenges you've faced and overcome? Yeah. In business? Probably the thing most of your listeners have had to go through or they're right in the middle of. <laughs> and, and that is, you know, as a, as a business owner, um, we've had to change our, our business model a number of times. You know, we had stuff that was really working and then the marketplace moved on and we had to, we had to um, try some new things. And some of it didn't work the way we had hoped and some of it did. So I, I think the biggest obstacle that we face constantly is, is just this notion of getting better and staying in the game and trying to figure out, um, you know, what, what our clients want and need and how we can best deliver that. And mm. that's constantly changing yeah. because the marketplace is always evolving and moving. And just, just when you think you got it cornered, you know, then it, then it moves a little bit. So, and I think that's a pretty, pretty common challenge for all the business owners we work with. You know, it's easy to get discouraged in that and feel like, you, you know, you, you just figured it out and now it moved again. But that's yeah. the nature of it, right? Yeah. And that and the success curve isn't straight up. I think a lot of the stuff you hear today, you're led to believe that the success curve is just this almost uninterrupted straight curve when it's not, mm -hmm. it's a bumpy line, it's a jagged line. And, and when that's not happening for you, like you think it should, it's easy to get discouraged and go, well, something's wrong with me when the reality is, is that's the process, right? It's never, it's never all straight up. Uh, there's bumps along the way, there's challenges and what makes the entrepreneur or the um, the business owner, the leader so effective is staying in the game, holding that ambiguity, holding that uncertainty and still being able to, you know, perform at their best day in and day out. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. If you're liking this podcast, help spread the word by subscribing, sharing, leaving a rating and a review to connect, go to nfacoaching.com where you can join the Max Potential Habits community and get access to all of my free and paid resources. There's daily inspiration on Instagram, IGTV videos, access to the Max Potential Habits LinkedIn group, and links for working with me in the live weekly Max Potential Habits online group training, the NFA Money Magnet Habits online course, and if you're really serious about taking it to the next level, you can also schedule a Max Potential coaching consult. Until next time, I hope you have a NFA day where you thrive and feel alive.